All right, today we'll be going through carburetors on a 1975 Suzuki GT500 motorcycle. This is a two-stroke motorcycle. This is a twin cylinder. Obviously, it has the twin carburetors here. So, in another video, we've gone through this left-hand carburetor. Today, we'll be going through the right-hand carburetor. Obviously, not right and left as they sit here, but I just wanted to show you how they look when they're sitting on the motorcycle. So, here's your choke assembly here. It's got a, just simply a rod that'll, that goes through this carburetor here and you take a uh, flat screwdriver, loosen this um, bolt here and that allows us to slide this carburetor off of the other one. Those, that's the only piece that is holding these carburetors together. So I'm going to set that one aside as we've already gone through there and I can, I can send you a link to that video if you'd like that. So choke assembly, obviously we've got our, our uh, 12 millimeter um, bolt here just simply take this one apart and what you do then after you loosen it up a lot of times you can just take your finger here and, and loosen it up like that you've got a plunger underneath here same style as the other one except for this one is um, this one is put to use by that pin there from the other side so a plunger with a spring that'll go up and down the spring is just simply to uh, when you when you tap off of here you want it to you want it to pop down and not stay in the up position um, or the down position depending on where where you're wanting it at the time so we've got your idle adjust here and um, that's simply just going to raise and lower your slides your idle you can adjust either one uh, either carburetor they aren't adjusted together so getting them synced sometimes can be a bit of a challenge and a lot of times you've got to take it to a dealership um, to do that if it's not running good so we've got the uh, the slide here, and, I'll, and syncing a carburetor, I can show you how to do that in a separate video as well. Uh, it just takes a little bit of time. Um, got your slide where your throttle cable comes down from the top there. You can take that cap, and obviously it's got the, uh, the cable running through there, and we've taken that off. Um, but it is spring-loaded, so just kind of keep that in mind when you're pulling this off. And they're not, not a heavy spring, but a fairly long spring. And an O-ring there, a seal there. Make sure that's, inspect that. Now when you pull this off, your, uh, a lot of times what will happen is, um, if, you're, if your uh, throttle cable is still attached, you'll pull that slide off. All of this will come off together. Now what I do then is take, take my, my right hand here, take this spring, kind of pull it up in itself. And your cable is obviously running right down through the middle of that. Um, we've got a keeper in here that sometimes you can take and just kind of wiggle it out. Sometimes, sometimes you need pliers to stick down in there and you can pull that uh, holder out and then your cable will simply slide out at that time. Now you're able to have that slide separate from your spring. Your spring will slide down the end of your cable and then you can unscrew uh, either the top of this cap or in this case the, uh, the cable comes out. Uh, of this threaded area. So that is the top of the carburetor of this carburetor here. We have your air fuel screw here and um, you, you adjust this uh, very very slightly if your motorcycle isn't running right and uh, when you set it up to dealer specs um, when you get like you'd get it from the factory what you would do is count how many times you screw this in until it's completely seated. So in this case we've got half a turn, one and a half, two. Oops, two. So we are two turns out, which is about generally what it's what it is on a uh, stock motorcycle. So depending on uh, performance done to the bike, this might be slightly different, either riding conditions or altitude. So half turn, one full, one and a half, two, and that's where we need to be at there. Now to take this bottom bolo off, you've got. Um, you can drain the fuel in your carburetor, obviously shut your petcock off unless you have um, already disconnected it from the bike, but um, you can take this then and uh, loosen this and fuel will uh, start to drain out of this tube here. You want to make sure you've got a drain tube on this before you do that so you're not draining that on top of your motor, motor and discoloring your motor. So uh, it just takes a... Uh, open this up slightly for fuel to start running out there. You can do that if you're draining the bike for the year or uh, trying to get water out of fuel. The best thing is though if you've got water in your fuel 
Um, I like to take and clean this carburetor anyways, or if this carburetor's been sitting all winter, a lot of times just draining the fuel uh, via this cap here isn't going to uh, completely fix all your problems. To take this bottom bowl off, now you've got four Phillips screws around the outside. And these times, these ones could sometimes be a bit of a challenge, um, especially if somebody's really cranked on them, uh, putting this carburetor back together the last time. So you want to make sure uh, you're, you've got a good carburetor, or excuse me, a good screwdriver. Make sure you're putting good pressure down on it before you start turning. If you can't do that, these are uh, set up nicely to where you can get a small pair of vice grips in there and loosen those up. So um, take that cap then, this bottom bowl here, I like to just tap on it one or two times if it hasn't been apart in a number of years and that kind of breaks that seal allowing us to pull this off. We've got a lot of corrosion in here and with the right carbon choke cleaner sitting, uh, these, this will clean up just fine. So this is your bottom bowl here. If, if fuel is sloshing around in your bottom bowl area, um, the fuel will leak down this tab here and it'll come out this bottom nipple. Um, so just keep that in mind if your motorcycle is bouncing around on a trailer or bouncing around the back of a pickup or something or even going down the road, you may uh, be dripping fuel out of this cap here. You never want to plug it because of this, um, even though the dripping may sometimes get annoying, if this is plugged, that fuel has only got one place to go and that's either, well, it's got two places to go, either your air box, if your air box uh, is lower than your intake on your motor, otherwise it's going to drain right down to your cylinder and you're going to have some serious problems when you go to start it with your cylinder uh, loaded with fuel. Main jet here and uh, you can see here, well I'll show you when I get it off, but we've got uh, this jet that I'm going to pull off here and we are missing the washer that goes around the center of this here. So generally you'd see a brass washer around this main jet. And um, we don't have that now, um, but we'll need to get it before we put this back together. That's your main jet there, sits right in the middle. Your uh, needle that is on your slide is gonna run right down into the middle of that main jet. So if you've got performance under your bike or um, maybe needing a little more speed out of it, um, maybe add some exhaust, maybe add a good air filter, uh, you may want to change the size of your main jet. Next we've got your pilot jet, it's going to be all the way down in this area here. And these pilot jets are extremely small. And they can be a bit of a challenge to get clean. I'd take a, uh, a very small screwdriver and run it all the way down there. Make sure you're seated properly on that pilot jet before you start turning it or you're going to round the top of this brass jet off of there and cause issues. So that's what your pilot jet looks like there. You want to take uh, compressed air, blow through it. Make sure that you can hold it up to light. You can see through it. Also take uh, carbon choke cleaner. I prefer this gum out brand. Um, it, it, it cleans very well. It's got good pressure. It can really blow through there. Next, um, you can also take carbon choke cleaner, spray this entire carburetor down um, and uh, blow it out with compressed air. Next, we've got a pin running through here. And these sometimes, especially on these older motorcycles, can be a bit of a challenge to pull these pins. Um, I will want to tell you if you're going to put any amount of pressure at all on these posts, you want to make sure it's supported really well. And I would suggest never banging on these posts at all. Even if you've got a, a pick or something, you just want to be really careful how you treat these posts. They are aluminum and they have a tendency to break off if you put any amount of pressure on them at all. You can't replace those. Uh, you just got a new car. You got to get a new carburetor. So, bottom bowl here. These are brass. Or excuse me, bottom float here. Brass float. Make sure it's not cracked in the in the seams or anywhere else. Uh, these are adjustable, which is nice. So, if you've got fuel constantly dumping out of your overflow here. Um, you think maybe your float height isn't set quite right. Uh, in this position, you can take, uh, if you do have fuel constantly dripping out of here, you can take and push this tab down and you only want to do it a very, very small amount because if you do it more than that, uh, you could potentially be starving your bike for fuel uh, when you are um, going down the road. So you want to make sure that you don't cut your bike short of fuel. 
but also if it is constantly dripping, maybe your flow height isn't set quite right, and your manual will give those measurements that are checked with me, and I can, I can get you those measurements. Here is the needle and seat then. This seat is replaceable on this model. You've got a 10 millimeter um, socket area here. You put a wrench or a socket on there and pull this out and you can adjust or you can replace this needle and seat. So this is the needle here and what happens a lot of times is they'll groove right here where they're constantly opening and shutting, slamming against each other. Uh, so you want to inspect that really good. Make sure there's no grooves. Also check, make sure there's no debris down in here in your seat. Your fuel is going to come in here from your fuel tank and it's going to work its way through the carburetor and come out here. So potentially by putting that uh, needle in there like that, tipping it upside down, putting fuel in here, you should not have fuel coming out. It should all just stick in, in this uh, port here. If you take your finger off of this, um, you should have all your carbon joke cleaner or your fuel dump out of this uh, orifice there. So you want to make sure that your needle and seat are sealing properly. This kind of going back together, this will just sit down in there like that. You can just take this pin in, push it right back through. You want to make sure that it is centered completely. If you're sticking out just slightly when you go to put your bowl on, a lot of times it will either uh, um, keep your bowl from going on. You'll get pretty frustrated with why it's not going back together. Main jet, again, we're missing the brass washer. Um, the word, in this case, we're going to have to order another one because uh, it does not come on this motorcycle. So, pilot jet, stick it down in there. Take a flat screwdriver. Make sure you're seated properly uh, before you start tightening it. And obviously, we're not going to tighten this one here. But uh, same thing there. Make sure you're seated really well before you start turning that on there. We've got our bowl then. Make sure you've cleaned that out really well. There's nothing down in there. Um, set that down on there. Check that gasket. Make sure that gasket is in good condition. Then it is time to take these four Phillips screws, tighten these back down, make sure that you don't crank on them. It can make it difficult for the next guy. These four screws are tightened up. I'm gonna take this choke now, stick it back on here. Let's see, I'm trying to figure out which way this went. I believe it was this way. You can take a lot of times where this cap is aluminum, so you can just kind of run it down in there quite a ways before you gotta get a wrench on there. You're not able to turn very well with a wrench, so I like to take it as far down with my fingers as I can. top cap obviously we would have the uh, cable on here now going back together uh, the cable is no good when we took it apart so only one way this will go completely all the way down you can put it in the wrong way and it'll start going down but it won't, it won't seat all the way down there so you want to make sure that your um, groove here well your shorter fatter groove here will sit on this idle adjust so going back together also, you want to make sure that your needle goes down into that main jet holder there. Um, make sure that's seated properly. Take that cap then, check that uh, gasket there, that rubber gasket, make sure it's good. You know, make sure putting this cap back on that you are um, going on there straight. These are it's a very fine aluminum thread and you can strip those out very, very easily. So, tighten that up. And that is carb cleaner on a Suzuki GT500.